we'll answer it. Um, but is everybody excited about being here? Good. Well, the, the first thing is, uh, I know a lot of people don't really know how me and Miss Daniel met, so we, we thought we would uh, talk about that, um, because it's kind of funny, we understand um, <laughs> a lot of time, uh, relationships are kind of, you know, you, you see somebody and it's love at first sight, and uh, it really wasn't that. <laughs> it wasn't love at first sight. Um, it wasn't, I promise. Um, and <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, not because she's not beautiful, because I didn't think we, we meshed well at first. And uh, the, the funny story about how we met was actually, I was actually wanting to date her friend. I know, I know, it's, it's strange how, how God works all this out. Uh, but I was, actually, uh, I was actually interested in her friend, and um, it was... It, it, it was strange, you know what I mean? It was different. And uh, her friend brought Danielle uh, with her uh, to hang out. And uh, she really just sat in the corner. <laughs> and uh, and uh, afterwards, afterwards, uh, her friend wasn't living for the Lord. And, and I was like, well, you know, that's out of my out of my book. If they're not living for the Lord, that's, that's not what I want in my life. And that was the reality was... I was interested in her friend until I found out she wasn't living for the Lord. Uh, and then uh, a few months later, I get a text message from this lovely lady saying that, that she wanted to talk. And um, after that, it was pretty much I knew that I, I loved her. I knew that we had a lot more in common than I thought at the very beginning. We were both saved when, when we met each other. Um, we both had a relationship with the Lord. And um, it was, uh, we started dating July 4th. Um, and by September, I knew I wanted to marry her. Okay. Um, and uh, so it was, um, I mean, it wasn't too much longer after that. It was beginning of, uh, beginning of, I guess, February. And uh, I took her out to dinner and uh, took her to a nice restaurant. And then took her... Took her out to a nice uh, what a hibachi, hibachi, hibachi where they cook in front of you and throw shrimp in their head and all that good stuff. And took her and uh, and uh, afterwards I was like, man, you know, uh, where am I going to do this? And so I took her out to Sanibel Lighthouse. Does anybody know where that's at? Okay, let me rewind a little bit. Let's get to the funny part. Let me rewind, okay? So, a couple days earlier, I sat down with Danielle's dad, which every man should do that. I've done it. Every man should do that. Yeah. Is sit down with the father that you want to marry his daughter and ask him. And uh, so his, it, shh. Hey, her dad knew that, that I was about to ask her to marry me because I talked to him a few days before this. And uh, for me, I, I'm an on-time type of person. If you're not five minutes early, you're late. That's bottom line. It didn't matter if I was about to ask her to marry me. Five minutes, you're dead wrong if you're late. And uh, so, so I'm calling her and she's late to dinner. And I'm so upset. She's, she's so upset now. Okay. <laughs> And uh, so I, I'm calling her. I'm just like, hey, you got to hurry up. And her dad, she, when she got there, she's like, yeah, my dad was really on me. And I'm like, yeah, because he knew what was happening, Dodo. <laughs> and uh, my mom's like, honey, calm down. Just take a shower. Get ready. And my dad's like, get in the shower and get ready. Like, That's right. <laughs> That's right. So it all worked out. And uh, we went to dinner. And there was a bunch of people at dinner. It was just a kind of awkward thing. I, I actually called the, the restaurant and was going to give them the ring. And they were going to put it in a glass for her and bring it out for her when she asked for a refill. Uh, I didn't do that because I felt that it was more of a showy type of, uh, you know, engagement. I thought it was real showy. So I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. And so I did what every man should do. And I got down on my knee. 
at, at Santa Bell Beach at the Lighthouse and asked her to marry me. And now, amen. Uh, we've been married going on four years now. Four years. Amen. And so what we're going to do right now is, is I kind of, we got a few questions. Um, that we're going to put on the, the board, and we're going to answer some questions. We're going to answer some of the important questions we feel was important in our relationship um, with the Lord. Do you see them? They have black backgrounds. Got it? Yeah. Um, so the first question, you, you could put a background to that and make it look cooler, right? Everybody wanted cooler, right? Okay. Um, it says, this, why is it important to serve God together in relationships? Um, why is that important? Why is it important? Um, so, do you want to answer? Okay. Um, I actually wanted to read a scripture on this so that you guys understand. Uh, it's, you know, in, in, you know, I know when I was younger, um, I, I chose to, like, date people and didn't really care about their relationship with God. I just tend to date them, and, and it was kind of, I wasn't really looking for anything in the future. It was just like right now, it's cool to have a person to date and uh, when I got saved, that was my priority. Just like I told you, the girl that I was interested in, which was Danielle's friend, uh, instantly when I knew she wasn't serving the Lord, I pulled away from the relationship because I knew it was important to me and to God that if I'm going to be in a relationship with somebody, that the crucial thing that holds us together should be Jesus Christ. And I believe that even for you, it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. I believe that the foundation of our relationships with each other, friendships and dating relationships. I'm not saying you're sixth grade, you need to go out there and date. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when when it's time, when, when it feels your parents say it's okay for you to date and, and, and you're, you start to date, um, making it a priority that Jesus is the center of that relationship. But I wanted to read a scripture, and it's 2 Corinthians 6.14. I don't have it on the screen, so let me just read it to you. And this is in the ampl Amplified Version. It says this, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay, what it's talking about, this is my, my teacher coming in, because I can't just tell you that and not tell you what it means. Uh, unequally yoked, back in the day when the Bible was written, um, they used to use oxen, like horses and goats and those types of things, to turn and to till the ground and to do work. And we understood if there was a more powerful animal, that it, it wouldn't work well, because the powerful animal would be pulling along the other animal, and it wouldn't work right. So it says, do not be unevenly yoked uh, with unbelievers. Do not uh, make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them. Inconsistent with your faith. Inconsistent with your faith. It's important to have a faith in God in our relationships. For what partnership have uh, have right living and right standing with God uh, with iniquity and, and lawlessness? It's saying who, who has faith in God and then who doesn't have faith in God. It just doesn't meet. It doesn't work together. Uh, and then it goes on. Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? So to me, why is it important to serve God in a relationship? Because I believe in the hardest times of our relationships, that that's the only thing that's going to keep us together. That's the only thing that will keep us together. Because beauty looks, why, why, do, why do we see 60, 70 year old people divorcing and why do we see 100 year old people still married? Because they, they're, not, they're not in love with the looks, they're in love with the heart and the relationship. And what I want you guys to know is that's the key in your relationships. Uh, and, and like I said, this is a precursor. I know a lot of you, your mamas and daddies won't let you date. That's understandable. I'm saying for the future. No, for the future, it's a priority. And the uh, second question is, should we date people that do not have a relationship with, with God? And I'm going to let Danielle answer. Um, well, I think, obviously, no. Because it just makes it really hard to um, have this, be in match with someone that... You're constantly trying to go after things with God, and they're constantly telling you that you shouldn't be doing that or ridiculing you or making you feel bad for wanting to go to church and wanting to do these things with your Christian friends. And um, it just makes being in a relationship with God very, very hard. And um, so... It's, it is a very sticky situation. Um, you know... If we say that we're Christians, we, we seek after God. That's what Christians do. And we, we try to, to maintain our relationship with God. 
But when we're unevenly yoked with an unbeliever, what happens is that there's tension between the two. There's tension because we're striving for the Lord, but how can we strive if the person that we're connected to is not striving with us? It's like a team, fo a football team. There's, you can't just put one person on a football field and expect them to win against a team of seven, uh, 11, whatever teams, how many ever is on the team. It's, it's, it's about being partnered together and doing it together. Uh, the third question is this, what should we look for in another person? And uh, I'm going to let Danielle share about, um, I didn't bring it up here, did I? Uh, Frankie, is there like a little piece of paper right behind you on the opposite side where my Bible was? No, behind you. Something behind me. <laughs> on the counter. Over there? No, right there. Oh, it's right there. Okay, so, um, well, I'll just wait for a second so I can show you. Um, I think it's really important that we have things that we set in our mind and we set in our hearts that when in a relationship with someone else or, um, or anything like that, whether it's a friendship or dating, since we're talking about dating, um, that you stick to and um, that you don't you don't really stray away from because, and, and pray about these things. I have a, a list somewhere that I wrote in, Team Challenge, and um, when I finally met Pastor Jason and, you know, it became very apparent that he was the person that I really felt God wanted me to spend the rest of my life with, I um, found my list that I had written and, um, and I was looking through it and the only thing that wasn't on that list that Pastor Jason was, was that he didn't have um, parents and because his parents were with the Lord. And, um, but everything on that list, as far as you know, being able to worship God freely, um, having a call on His life, um, being bold for what He believes in in the Lord, um, wanting to continue His education, um, good credit. I mean, all these things were on my list because to me, those you heard that good credit, <laughs> good credit. Some of you guys don't know what that is. That's <laughs> You'll learn one day. Um, and so um, I busted out this list and I was looking over it. And um, everything just matched, and it kind of confirmed for me that this is the person that God wanted me to spend the rest of my life with. So I encourage you guys to think about things that, you know, that are important to you, um, not, you know, dumb things like their favorite color better be purple or something like that, but serious <laughs> things. Um, you know, and when you find that person you feel like you want to invest your life with, or even dating in general, you know, just have this list and go by it. Let it be your cursor to, you know, who you set yourself up with in a relationship because it's it's very important. These are some good questions. Let me let's answer some of these since it's relevant because I think these are important. The first question that was uh, sent in said this: uh, How do you deal with fights with each other? Um, you know, I think that that there's a misconceived notion that it, when you find a, a a Christian partner in, in a relationship. Uh, that yeah, woo, that uh, everything's gonna be everything's gonna be all good. And uh, for me personally, as as the the Bible says that I am the head of a household, our household being being the husband. Uh, what I do to deal with fighting for whoever set that in, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to it. Even uh, even in relationships, not even just dating relationships, just friendship relationships. But the thing that I do uh, is is I always stay positive, and I, I always stand on the scripture, uh, James 1, 9, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. I, I stand on that, and if I don't have anything good to say, I won't say it at all. I, I, I won't say it. I, I would rather just be quiet and move on, and then deal with it when the tensions and the anger has passed, or at least is on the tail end. What do you think? Uh, I think communication is also very key um, because if you can't communicate and you can't freely express to this person what's, what is bothering you or what's upsetting you or what's making you angry, um, then it's really going to be hard in any relationship to go forward um, because things are left unresolved, things are left not talked about, and then you start building walls in your, in your relationship with people. Um, and so it's very, very key to communicate. And I... I had to learn that the hard way because before Pastor Jason, um, I had um, dated a few guys. And, um, and in those dating people and being with people, um, 
I wasn't a very good communicator, and so when I finally married Pastor Jason and we argued, it was I didn't talk at all. I would like look out the window or walk away and like not talk for hours, and it was just very unhealthy. So I would say the biggest thing is communication as well, because if you can't communicate, then it's just it's it's very hard to move forward. Second question is this: How do you guys make your relationship work? And very simple, very simple. If you want to know how to have a lasting relationship with somebody that you marry or you're intending to marry, if you keep God's word, your guide to living, your life will be better than you ever imagined. Um, how do I make it work? Me personally, I make sure that everything I do reflects the word of God and reflects my relationship with Jesus. Because I look at Danielle as God has given me a gift a gift. Guys, if we look at girls as they're not a gift to this world, there's a problem. Because we need women, girls, when we get married, to be who they are in our lives uh, because they play an important role. Uh, but how do I keep our relationship working? Keep the Bible the center. I know that's a real spiritual term, but it's a reality. Is, is our prayer life, praying together, reading our Bible together, um, almost every morning, we have we have a, a, a two living rooms in our house. The back living room has a TV. The front living room has no TV. When we bought the house, Danielle said, there's not going to be a TV in this front room. There will not be a TV. And I was like, oh, well, you know, every guy wants 17 TVs in a house, especially a party in one room. And, uh, and she was like, no, it's not happening. And what we found ourselves is that room is our place that we sit down together and read. And it's, it's the greatest joy to look over and see her reading her word and her look over at me and her seeing me read my word. And uh, so that's a way that we make it work is we spend time together. And if there's some of you in relationships in here um, and you're wondering, you know, how, I mean, how to make it godly or how to work on it and, and be focused towards the Lord, is begin to read your Bible together, uh, text you text each other, uh, uh, you know, uh, scriptures and different things like that, thoughts. Um, you have anything that you want to share on that? Laugh a lot. Yes. Life is so serious, and um, your relationships are supposed to be serious, but you have to laugh and you have to have a good time. And so that's another thing. Do things, go bowling, go fuck up golfing, um, and just laugh at each other. Go to the movies and just have a good time because that's, that's how we keep it. Follow me on Instagram, I promise you'll laugh. Mm -hmm. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Some of you guys know, some of you don't, right? Mm -hmm. Instagram. <laughs> Sorry. The third question says this, how do you know if the person, uh, uh, I guess the person is meant to be for you? How do you know God wants that person for you? That's a good question. We actually have that on here. You want to answer that? Okay, how do you know if the person uh, is meant for you? How do you know God wants you to be with that person? Oh, well, the list. The list, the list, list, the list is key. Yeah. Get you a list. Um, get you a list. And... Um, a lot of it has to do, too, with your family and your friends. Um, now, I'm going to throw this out there that your family and friends do all not always make things easier in your relationship. But um, I know, personally, for my parents, that um, their outlook on who I was going to spend the rest of my life with meant a lot to me. So, um, and even when I was dating other people, it meant a lot to me. And, and I know this to be true because I dated people that my parents didn't like and I didn't care what they had to say and I kept dating them. And in the end, my parents were right and I should have listened to them to begin with. And um, even with Jason, you know, I, I sat my mom and dad down and I was like, no, I really like him. I, you know, I'm going to bring him. Stop it. I'm going to bring him to the 4th of July and to meet the family and um, just talk what you think about him because I really want to know. And, um, few weeks later we talked about it and you know they were like you know I think he's really amazing I think he brings out the best in you I haven't seen you laugh like this in a long time and <laughs>
know, there's things. His parents were still here. They'd probably be like, sometimes that girl is crazy. And, uh... <laughs> I was like, hey, these are things that are valid concerns for my parents. I just want to let you know that, you know, I, I take that stuff seriously when my parents think these things. And, you know, um, yeah, so take what your family says seriously. Sometimes your family's like, oh, I just think he has bad intentions. But let it play out. You know, let, let it give time to be true or not be true. But um, take what your friends and your family say seriously and listen to it and weigh it. And if, it, if it's true, it's true. And if not, just come up. But... I think that's key too. Amen. The next question says this. What was it like the first time you saw the two, wait, the first time you two saw each other? I'm pretty sure she loved me the first time she no, saw me. I I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, I really think so. I, she like, I don't know who you think he is trying to be so cool over there. Oh. Yeah. I am pretty cool. Oh. Well, I mean, I'll tell you the, the honest thing is, is like I said, is, um, you know, I, I was interested in her friend and I found out she wasn't serving the Lord. And uh, what connected me and Miss Daniel's heart was our relationship with God. That I've seen a genuine relationship with the Lord in her life and in my life. And it, it really drew us closer together. And so when we first seen each other, um, I don't think it was, it was anything special. It was kind of, it was kind of weird. <laughs> We, I'm just being honest. I mean, we both had different directions. We were looking for different, different things in life, kind of. Um, and uh, but God will always bring what's supposed to be together, together. Because it was, it was a month or more be, I, from the time I seen her to, to, to the time she texted me was about a month later. Um, and then I knew uh, within a couple weeks after that that she was the one. Uh, to marry, and just so you guys know, her dad, the first time I met her, he wanted me to drive in his drag car. You know you got something good if he wants you to do that. Uh -huh. Yeah, he asked me, you want to ride in my race car? And he also said, when Jason asked him to marry him, oh, okay, do you want to go hunting the woods with me? Because if it messes up, I'm going to bury the woods. That he did. Huh? You guys don't understand that. That's okay. So, that's okay. Uh, the next question says this, what does it feel like when you are truly in love with someone that believes in Christ? Well, um, what you see in the Bible, uh, as you see Jesus walking and you see how he treated people, that's what you'll see in somebody that you fall in love with. Um, if it's a genuine godly relationship, um, you know, that's exactly what, what it'll be. It, each of us are a reflection of the Lord. And I want you guys to realize that it's not always uh, it's not always spectacular. It's always not. What are y'all doing? Um, it's not always uh, you know the the best, exciting, and different things like that. But what we do is when we first see each other, uh, you know, and we start talking about our relationship with God, and, and started like talking about what our goals were in life. Uh, what we found out was that we had a lot of things in, in common and what it felt like to me to be in love was somebody that I was willing to give my life for to see them succeed. That's what it was for me. Is uh, I, was, I was willing to do whatever it took to see them you know, succeed. question is this, um, how did you know God? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, how did I know God? Well, for me, it was very, very easy that the life I was living apart from him was full of destruction. And when I accepted him into my heart, my life began to change. Um, so how did I know God? I knew God because people told me about God and His goodness and His grace and His love and His mercy and His kindness for me. And when I accepted Him, I seen those things that I heard actually be a part of my life. And then I began to operate in those things. 
Um, I tell people all the time, how can you love somebody unless you understand how much God loves them? How could, how could I love you guys if, if I never knew how much God loved you guys? Um, so that's how I know God is because I spent time with him. And uh, somebody first told me about God, and then I accepted them, and then I see those things uh, were true. Amen? Okay, let me, let me, hold on, let me see. Let's answer one more question. It says this, uh, I know marriage is a calling. I don't feel called, but I still uh, want to get married because I see it all around me. What should I do? I'll answer that. There's nothing wrong with, with looking around you and seeing people marry. There's nothing, I mean, I mean, it, it's a good thing to see marriage because we understand that God created marriage for a reason. Because the Bible says when uh, two become one, he's talking about uh, when, we, when we got married, we, we combined our lives together forever. Um, and, you know, it's that, that's it, really what it is. Um, you know, I think seeing people in um, in marriage and different things like that should interest us. And, and because what we have to understand is when we see people in a marriage, we understand that that's a gift from God. God gifted us the ability to marry each other and to love each other and to be in a relationship where I get the honor and the privilege to live with my best friend. You know, that's really the bottom line. I get to spend time with my best friend. I get to talk to my best friend. She gets to tell me when I'm getting crazy because y'all know that I get crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I believe that not everybody is called to get married. So I'm not going to get up here and say everybody's going to get married and everybody's, I don't, you know, we have to have a relationship with the Lord and have Him direct us uh, because it's important uh, when I I recently did Patrick and Christie's wedding and, and uh, I said in their vows I said in their vows, in their, in their vows it says in their vows it says death to us part and uh, that's true she see she's saying death because she's like I will kill you if I mess around. Um, but that's just a reality, you know, uh, you know, when I got saved, and a lot of you guys are real young, so I don't want you to, like, take this weird, but, you know, I, I when I got out of Teen Challenge and started living for the Lord, I was 20 some, 21 years old, 20, 21, and so at that point, I, was, I wasn't looking for just somebody to be in a relationship with and to put it on my Facebook status or tweet it, it was, it was more like I wanted to, I wanted to marry somebody to spend my life with, and that's how it worked for me. So marriage is important. Not everybody is called to get married, but know that marriage is death to us part. Uh, that's how God created it, holy matrimony. Um, it's a holy thing that God seals together. Um, and so that's it. It's at 12, 16. Wait, I have to say Okay, she's got to say something. She's going to end it. Okay, um, go ahead. Uh, when we got married, um, the pastor that married us, they had us do as a married couple, and um, when we were standing there, um, the pastor that married us, he was saying, you know, remember where you were before, you know, you stand here together, and um, I don't know for Jason, but I know for me that when I was standing there, I kept thinking about all these things that I had done before Christ and where I was now with Pastor Jason, and um, and I know for both of us, we brought things and you know, some baggage into our marriage because of the choices we had made before Christ and the things that we allowed ourselves to be in and, you know, especially relationally with other people. And um, I do want to say this. I want to say that um, be very careful in your relationship with other people, um, how far you allow yourself to go physically and emotionally and across the board altogether. Um, because I can say for me that when I stood and I, I did that communion, I just, it broke my heart that I couldn't give all these emotions and physically and all 
it's not even about just the physical part of being with someone. It's emotionally, and like I said, it was hard for me to communicate. Um, it was very hard for me to stand there and know that um, I can't give him everything that I wish I could because um, I, I emotionally and whatever allowed myself to do that with other people. Um, so just be careful how far you let yourself go with someone else, not just physically, but emotionally and, and um, you know, spiritually as well, um, because it's, it's very hard to be in a marriage and be serious with someone and have a fresh start. Amen. <laughs> All right, everybody stand up. Give it. A little stretch. This is my running stretch. I never do it. You don't run. I never stretch. I never. But that's okay. Hey, if you're